Spiritual Teaching 253 Love Each Other 1. My presence on this day is that of a judge. My light penetrates the sanctuary of your being. 2. I come to receive and also to give, to receive the fruit of the good sowing and to give you new seeds to cultivate. 3. You come before me to thank me for the benefits received and for the good results of your works on the spiritual path. There are those who arrive repentant before me. They are those who carry the weight of some remorse and before my voice of justice is shaken and filled with fear. One and the other seek my forgiveness and pray that they do not lack sustenance in the times to come. 4. Today begins a year among you, precisely the penultimate of my communication by human understanding, and it is natural for my word to be manifested as justice to the people who have long received these lessons. 5. With fire of love and justice I will make you understand my teaching written from the beginning in your consciousness, so that you testify about this truth tomorrow. 6. All my works are written by me in a book called Life. The number of its pages is uncountable. The infinity of his wisdom outside of God who is its author cannot be reached by anyone. But there, in each of its pages, there is a summary in which the Father has limited each of his works to put it in the scope of all understanding. 7. You too are writing the book of your life in which all your works and each one will be written of your steps along the path of evolution. That book will be written in your consciousness and will be the light of knowledge and the experience with which tomorrow you illuminate the path of your younger brothers. 8. You still can't present your book to anyone because you don't even know its content. But soon there will be light in your being and you will be able to show your brothers the pages that speak of your development, of your restitution and of your experiences. You will then be an open book before humanity. Blessed are those who take possession of their mission they will feel that they are climbing the scale that Jacob saw in dreams, which is the spiritual path that leads beings until the presence of the Creator. 9. Take with love all the tests of your life, knowing that they are lessons that enlighten your spirit and strengthen it to walk in the long road that still needs to be covered. The greater your understanding, the greater it will have to be your love. Towards the one who sent you on the path of the struggle for improvement and who has always helped in the fulfillment of your tests. 10. Certainly I test you, I touch you and I judge you, but at the same time I support you, I forgive you and I lift you up, a spirit will never come out disappointed in my presence, because in me there is no room for injustice. 11. I bless you, multitudes who have learned to listen to me in silence, silencing the sobs that tear your thorns on the trail. Your lip is silent, so as not to let any complaint come out of it, Instead your heart blesses me. How can the Father not bless you in turn, who thus feels understood by his creatures? 12. The light is being made in your spirit. It is the time when darkness rises from the people that I now come searching and gathering. 13. Many congregations make up this people, and from each one of them I am receiving on this day their tribute or the fruit of their work, so that each one receives the award according to their works their aspirations and ideas. 14. He who goes looking for honors and praises from the world, here he will have them, but they will be of short duration and for you will they will not serve the day of their entry into the spiritual world. Whoever goes after money, here will have his retribution, because he went after what he breathed in. But when the time comes to leave everything here to appear in the hereafter, you will not have the least right to claim compensation for his spirit, even if he thinks he has done much. Charity. On the contrary, the one who has always renounced flattery and favors, the one who has loved cleanly and selflessly his brother and renounced all material rewards, busy sowing good, enjoying doing charity, he will not be thinking of rewards because he will not live for his own satisfaction, but for that of his peers. How big will your peace and your happiness be when it is in the bosom of your Lord? 15. It is necessary to let the trees grow to recognize them by their fruits. Then it will be the hour of judgment, in which they will be destroyed in the fire of my justice of love all those who have borne poisonous fruits, and those that have produced fruits of life and health. 16. This is how religions and all sects that exist on earth will be judged, so that only those that exist love and follow the truth, and all those who hide it behind the veil of lies, 
falsehood and hypocrisy disappear. 17. Only one law exists and therefore only one way to fulfill it is the one that you must all seek so that you find yourself spiritually unified. 18. Judge yourselves intimately at this moment, you who hear my voice. Ask yourselves if your ideal is high and your works clean. Ask yourselves if you are already prepared so that after my departure you will know how to remain among humanity as patriarchs, prophets, and apostles. Decide if you have already spiritualized, if you are living up to the name of spiritualists that I have given you to designate. 19. In the year 1948, a commotion shook this people, it was the touch of my justice that has come to wake you up, as in all times, when you have fallen into the lethargy of fanaticism or routine. 20. If since you began to have my manifestation at this time, you had tried to understand the essence of my new message, how much pain, how much discussion and how many inner struggles you would have avoided. But you bowed like always to the external worship which prevents freedom and elevation to the spirit, and the moment had to come to put a limit to your mistakes. Are you spiritualists? Well, you need to demonstrate it in your worship of God, in your life and in your relationships with each other. 21. While some have awakened understanding what the truth is and have risen fighting for spirituality, others, clinging to their past customs, have embraced their symbols, their forms and their habits, saying that I showed you all the symbols and that, therefore, they are the law for them. 22. The struggle has arisen, but it is not the first time that this has happened among the people doctrinated by God. Already in the first time, in one of the commandments dictated by God on the top of Mount Sinai, he ordered men not to use some figure that represented the divine and at the same time made them understand that the true worship was that of the fulfillment of that law, which was completely enclosed in love for God and loving neighbor. 23. However, the people created countless traditions, growing every day in fanaticism and idolatry. The symbol was no longer the form through which the explanation of something superior, but the object of idolatry and worship. 24. It was necessary for me to come into the world to show you the path from which you were moving away, but when the priests and the Pharisees realized that I had not been preaching traditions, they accused me telling the people that my word came against the law of Moses. There, my voice rose to reply to the hypocritical representatives of the law, that I do not come against what was instituted by the Father, but to fulfill it with my life, that which I came to erase from the hearts, were the useless traditions and ceremonies, for which they had forgotten to comply with the law, that is to say, loving God, loving one another. 25. Don't you just think that now, when you live in the time of the Holy Spirit, come to remove from your heart how much tradition and external worship have you introduced into this work, which you know as spiritualism. 26. It is good that at the beginning of each of the three revelations, which I have given to humanity, they have been some symbols and some acts are permitted to. Facilitate your understanding and assimilation of the divine teachings, but not so that you would keep them perpetually and much less so that you would adore them. That has always been the cause of your spiritual stagnation and the reason why I have come at all times to rescue you from the uncertain path, to lead you to the true path of light. 27. Now neither do I come to ignore what was instituted by me in the times past, but to teach you to fulfill it, elevating your life and your works to a greater degree of spirituality which is at the same time truth. 28. Thus, when I stop speaking to you in this way, you will have no need for subjects or rites or forms, because you will have freed yourself from idolatry and materialism, to seek with the Spirit the presence of the Father, who is also Spirit. 29. You are going to enter the bosom of a humanity tired of external cults and tired of its religious fanaticism. Therefore I tell you, that the message of spirituality that you are going to bring him will reach his heart like fresh and vivifying dew. 30. Do you think that if you came with fanatical cults and practices opposed to spirituality, the world could recognize you as bearers of a divine message? Truly I tell you, they would take you for fans of a new sect. 31. Given the clarity with which I have been speaking to you, there are those who say to me, Master, how is it possible that we are unaware of many of the practices that Roque Rojas left us? To which I tell you, that is why I gave you that example of the second era, when I made the people understand that by complying with rites, forms, traditions and festivals, 
they had forgotten the law which is the essential. I reminded you of that fact from your master so that you would understand that now you must also forget about traditions and ceremonies, even if you have learned them from Roque Rojas, as in those days the people inherited from Moses. 32. Now, I don't want to tell you that they have taught you something bad. No, they needed to resort to symbols and acts that helped the people to understand the divine revelations. But once that object has been achieved, it was necessary to come to erase every form or symbolism already useless to make the light of truth shine. 33. What I have been asking of you is clarity, from the spokesperson who transmits my word, to the last of the toddlers. 34. The greatest responsibility weighs on the spokespersons, because through their lips I am explaining the law, but they have not understood their responsibility. To them I say, Awake! Hear the voice of your conscience. Look at this innocent people, eager for my word, have clothed themselves with humility and conformity to what you offer them. What would it be up to you if the people rose up demanding spiritual preparation from you? And how much reason and right would I have, since that it is about his faith, his spirit, his peace on earth and his path to eternity? 35. Spokesmen, interpreters of my word, prophets of the third era, it is not your clumsiness, nor your smallness, nor your poverty. An obstacle so that I can manifest myself through you before humanity is your sin and lack of preparation those that limit the essence and hide the truth that I have brought for my people. 36. Truly I tell you, who does not feel capable of spiritualizing, better close his lips, but do not mix darkness with the truth, because the multitudes who listen do not yet know how to separate the chaff from the wheat, that is, the lie from the truth superfluous of the essential. 37. My word is severe and final, but look that this manifestation is also coming to an end and it is necessary that your best work be the crowning glory of the spiritual work that I have entrusted to you. 38. Know that this word that has flowed from your lips is the spiritual message that comes to overthrow reigns, empires and thrones so that the kingdom of heaven is established in the spirit of humanity, which is a kingdom of love, of peace and justice. 39. I have sent emissaries of my word to other nations. Pray for them and with your thoughts give them strength. They raise up seed and gather multitudes, which once spiritualized will join you with ties of brotherhood and understanding. 40. I am preparing new envoys of my word who will also have to take this good news to other countries. Over all I spread the mantle of my peace. 41. This time that you live is one of transition, of evolution, of tests, changes, and surprises. Live alert, watch and pray and persevere in my law. 42. Today is the fight, today there are merits, today we suffer, fight, and work. Tomorrow, when you are all in me, when you have conquered the perfection of the Spirit, you will have your dwelling in the bosom of the Father, where it arrives and is kept everything that reaches its perfection breast that contains wisdom, perfections, and beauties that you cannot conceive here. 43. My word is the way, the truth, and the life that leads to your spirit to the land of promise. Come for him, do not get lost, beloved people. 44. My ray of light rests on the mountain, from where I ask you, why are you still on her skirt? What have you not managed to climb? 45. Many listen to me with great joy in their hearts. But there are those who, upon hearing my word, allow themselves to be invaded by a great sadness. These are the ones who, like Israel in Egypt, feel like slaves, still bear the signs of the whip and its hunger is for freedom and light. 46. Know that it is for you that I have come, because I have seen you hungry and thirsty for justice, freedom and love. 47. Come and hear this voice, which comes to give you courage, to fill you with strength and to enlighten you so that you turn your back on the Pharaoh and leave his lands, where you have been captive, wounded, and humiliated. 48. Look up and contemplate the divine mountain as it invites you to climb it, come to it, have faith that you will reach the summit, walk the first steps, ascend and soon your joy will be great when you feel that the chains that held you and the yoke that oppressed you has been left behind. 49. O peoples of all times, Remove ingratitude from your hearts, so that you may truly experience the peace of your Father. 50. In this path the blind see, the weary regain strength, the crippled walk, 
the sick heal, and the sad sing of happiness. 51. I come to reunite my people and to ratify their spiritual mission before humanity, turning outcasts into useful beings to their fellow men, and to those who believe themselves disinherited, making them prophets and doctors of the spirit. 52. You are the ones who will have to testify to my coming in this third era. I know that nations and regions need your testimony. But know that when you get up, it must be to show you as the children of light. 53. First I want you to understand the spiritual greatness of the mission that I am entrusting you. Only in this way will your spirit give account of the responsibility of your mission. 54. But if you believe that I must wait until it is your will to prepare yourselves to carry this message of light to the world, you are in serious error, because I am the one who comes to save men and to rescue their spirit, you are only going to be forerunners, heralds, prophets, servants. It is to fulfill these missions that I am teaching you. 55. An essence I have deposited in the heart of each disciple, that essence will be present in your thoughts and prayers, in your words and in your works of charity. 56. Do you not remember that I have told you that you will be the spiritual flavor among humanity? 57. What more could you wish for on earth than to be spiritual counselors, guides and doctors of those in need? 58. Charity is one of the most beautiful flowers of love, and it is precisely the flower that I want to open in you to spread its essence among your brothers. Truly I tell you, if you have the ideal or the desire to give greatness to your spirit, I offer you the path of charity, I offer you that path little traveled by men, so that through it you may rise to me. 59. I want you to reach the end of this stage with the satisfaction of having remained faithful listening to my lessons. My word comes to strengthen you so that you continue firmly until the end of the day. 60. Many temptations and obstacles will have to come your way in the last days of my communication. I warn you and give you the voice of alert so that you watch and pray. 61. Be strong, O people, for the test will pass, because if you did not sustain yourselves in obedience and fidelity and you would fall in temptation, you will create an endless chain of trials that will confuse many understandings and will destroy the faith of many hearts. 62. The plan for your mission has already been drawn up and you must not stray from it. 63. I have told you that once I put an end to my word, I will give you enough time to prepare, studying, meditating and practicing my teaching among you. When I find that my people have spiritualized, I will open the ways where they will have to go carrying the message of light that I have entrusted to you to make it known to humanity. 64. Clear and simple is the plan that I have drawn up so that you do not modify it or alter it in the least if you want to call yourself spiritualist. 65. He who longs to have the power to convert his brothers, the power to heal the sick such as you have not seen until now in virtue to work prodigies, be faithful to my law, submissive to my commands and you will never be orphaned of inspirations or of strength to carry out great works full of love and wisdom. 66. He who despises the gifts of the Spirit and the fruits that spring from the clean practice of my doctrine, because they seduce him to praise material rewards, get rid of vanities and false satisfactions that do not feed the Spirit. That is what he loves on earth and what he has come to look for in my work and I grant him that he has it. Truly I tell you, to those who do not carry out what is arranged by me, that they do not come out of stagnation, nor renounce their fanaticism, their vanities and their materiality, will be the obstacle that prevents those who love my mandates and want to take them to true fulfillment. 67. With what words or reasons will those who disobey my orders respond to me when I present the people parked? wrapped in fanaticism and useless traditions, when I present to the peoples who were waiting the arrival of the apostles of the third era. 68. My love is the one that speaks to you, my light that watches unceasingly over you prevents you, to prevent you from carving the chalice of bitterness instead of spiritual advancement. 69. I prepare you for the day when I will speak to you last, because from that moment everything will change spiritually for this people. That is why I have been telling you for a long time not to be traditionalists or conservatives of exterior. Forms that you do not make of your practices, customs or habits that later you cannot uproot from your heart. 70. 
Did you think that everything would have to remain in the same way indefinitely? Did you think that all your life you were going to be gathered within these enclosures or rooms? No, people, it is necessary that everything that you have had disappear from your sight so that you can feel the light of true spirituality emerge. So far you have not understood the essence of my message or the purpose of this work. 71. It is well that the former, lacking doctrine and teachings, will not be able to define the essence of a revelation which had just surprised you, but you, who are going to be one of the last, of those who witness the end of this stage, do you consider it fair that you keep the errors of the former and continue to ignore the essence of this message, as did those who saw only the dawn of the third time ignore? 72. No, your heart tells me. I tell you all that this conviction that you have at this moment will not abandon you in the hour of your temptations. Do not forget that on this day I tell you, that in exchange for your obedience and from your righteousness you will have peace in your home and on all the roads you travel. 73. Do all you can to enter prepared and strong in the time of confusion that is coming. Don't go with your confusion to increase that originated by sex, religions, philosophies and doctrines, when the time has come when all dispute the truth. 74. I want this people, taught in a spiritual way by me, to penetrate serene, conscious, zealous and humble in that time, and may your presence be a ray of light and a breath of calm over that storm. My peace be with you.